five major hacks to get a 4.0. How do you do it? Let's find out. Hello, 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 and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Julia and I am a second year medical student. The purpose of today's video is to talk about five easy hacks to secure a 4.0 in college. If you missed it, be sure to catch up on my last video, Pre-Med 101, The Basics. But for today, let's jump right into GPA. As you all know, grade point average, or GPA, is super important to a student in college. GPA is especially important to students who are trying to go on to higher levels of education. So anybody interested in going to graduate or professional school, this is of huge importance because you will be going through another step in another round of applications to get into graduate or professional school. And the main factor that admissions look at is GPA. It's the first measure by which a committee can stratify applicants. So therefore, it's the thing to either give you the advantage and make you stand out or to disadvantage you. So for those of you in pre-med especially, you want to make sure that your GPA is on point. I'm going to give you five hacks in order to make sure of this while you're in college. Be mindful that if you go to graduate or professional school, you also get a GPA there as well. So this isn't solely exclusive for undergrad. Graduate school gives GPAs as well. Most medical schools nowadays are pass-fail, so it's not really as relevant. However, for undergrad and graduate school, GPA is huge. Another key point about GPA is that it's also this distinguishing measure for awarding people things such as dean's list or graduating with honors. So if being a honor student or a distinguished student in college is important to you, then GPA is going to be the thing for you most to pay attention to. So what are the hacks? One, read the syllabus. So at the beginning of every college course, you will get a syllabus. The professor usually has a syllabus written up that either is online or handed out in person, and it details the entire operations of the course and all the need to know details. While most students usually just flip through it or never take the time to look at it, if you are aiming to get a 4.0, please, please, please pay attention to this next part. So there are two things that I want you to pay particular note to in a syllabus. One is the workload or the assignment list or something along those lines. So in their syllabus, most professors detail the assignment list, the exam dates, the material covered, and all of that information. Not only should you be marking down all of the important dates, which I'll go to in the next point, but by looking at this part of the syllabus, you can get familiar with the workload of the course. So what I mean by workload is that there are different amounts of effort and time and energy required from course to course. And knowing beforehand the workload and getting a feel for the difficulty or the amount of time that might be required of you to do well in this course will help you significantly in preparing and in your time management. Another key thing in the syllabus that I want you to pay attention to is the grading scale. This is something that most people don't even usually know about their course or don't even care, but I had to learn the hard way and I'm telling you this because it is something to pay mind to if you are a person that wants to get a 4.0 and knows that the grading scale matters. So in this section of the syllabus where the professors put their grading scale, it's usually broken up into A, A minus, B plus, B, and so on. And they usually put the grades that correlate to each category. Where this comes into play is that if you are unfamiliar, GPA is based on the grading scale in your courses, your credits. To get a 4.0, you need an A in every single class. An A or an A plus, they're the same thing on a transcript. However, if you get an A minus, this is not the same thing as an A or an A plus. And it has a different GPA associated with it than a 4.0. So I'll show you an example from my college experience to make it clear. So as you can see, in this semester, I got A's in all of my classes. So this corresponds with a 4.0 GPA. Great. However, in this semester, I had two A minuses with other A's, and this resulted in a 3.88 GPA. There are different types of A's, and you want to aim for an A or an A plus, which is the same, a 4.0. But an A- minus is not the same as an A and will not give you a 4.0. So be sure to pay attention to the grading scale in a syllabus because this is where the professors detail how they're grading. And some use pluses and minuses and some don't and just use A, B, C, D, F. 
So you need to pay note of that because you averaging a 95 versus a 93 in a course could mean the difference between an A and a 4.0 and an A minus and not a 4.0. So to summarize point one, make sure you read the syllabus. Get familiar with the workload and how much is going to be required of you for the course and also pay mind to the grading scale so that you know which grades you need to achieve in the course in order to get a 4.0. Second, scheduling and time management. These are fundamental concepts of success in general, not just in college. And if you are somebody that's not really good at scheduling or managing your time, this is something that you need to use your time during college to get better at and enhance. Because being organized, prioritizing, and managing your time and schedule is of huge significance in being academically successful. In college, there's so much going on and you're taking multiple courses at one time in addition to balancing work if you have a job and extracurricular activities and just the social aspect and being a college student. So it can be very easy for somebody to get overwhelmed and as a result, their academics take a hit. You can't afford to let this be you if you are aiming for a 4.0 GPA. So however you find personally is best for you to time manage and schedule, do that. Whether it be a planner or using the calendar in your cell phone, whichever way works best for you that you find is effective in managing your time, stick with that. Also, be sure to run your own race. Not everybody is able to balance the same things and how much you are able to juggle should have nothing to do with how the next person is able to juggle the things that they have to do. So manage your schedule according to self and not comparing yourself to how much everybody else is able to handle. As a college student, your various commitments can require different amounts of your time and energy. If getting a 4.0 is your primary goal, then you want to prioritize that. You should be mindful to not allow other commitments to overtake that goal and to get more of your time and energy. So scheduling and time management are key. Three, be strategic and stagger your schedule. What does this mean? So in your degree, you will have specific prerequisites that you are required to fill in order to graduate. You will know this. If you do not know this, go see your advisor. But how it usually works is in your first year or two of college, you're taking very general introductory level courses. And in your junior and senior year, you're then working your way up to the higher level courses that are in-depth content for your specific major. This is where the classes often start to get more difficult and require much more time and energy from you. So being that you have a specific amount of courses and credits that you need to complete before you graduate, Many students, especially in the age of student loan debt, are trying to finish as much of this coursework as quickly as possible and even graduate early to save money. But even if you're working at the normal pace of four years, be mindful that you do not overload yourself on credits. So each course has different credits or credit hours associated with it. And this is often a way that you can tell how much will be required of you. More credits or credit hours often equal more work, but that's not always the case. Nonetheless, be sure that you schedule your semesters based off of what you can handle. So pre-meds, for example, you will have to take biologies and chemistries and maths. And if through the grapevine you've heard that organic chemistry and Calc 2 and bio 220 are really difficult, those might not be three classes that you want to take all in the same semester. So if possible, you want to spread those more difficult courses out over your semesters to maximize your chance of doing better in those courses and getting a 4.0. Another strategy that I also did was to take summer classes. So during the summer, most college students are not in classes and they're usually just enjoying their time or working or traveling back home to see family. And I maximized on that because most colleges and universities offer summer classes and those classes usually have way less students. The professors are usually more engaged with each student individually. They say sometimes the classes are easier, but don't quote me on that. And if you have no other major commitments or courses, this is the perfect time to possibly take classes that are more difficult. 
This gives you an opportunity to take them during the summer that might be better suited for learning instead of during the fall and spring semesters where you are dealing with all of your other college commitments. So be familiar with your college or university, the curriculum, your major, summer classes, and explore all of your options. But the main point is to be strategic and stagger your schedule to maximize your results and give you the best opportunity to get that 4.0. Fourth point, utilize office hours and study groups. I know, I know, I know. I don't want to go to office hours. The professor doesn't even know me. I'm not doing well. But this is the main point. If you especially are not doing as well in the course, or if you are and you just want to learn a different way, office hours and study groups are two ways that are directly intended for you to learn. Every professor usually has office hours where students can come and get individual help on certain topics or themes in the course. These are the people who are making the exam. They write the questions. Who better to tap into than the professor if you need help? And I know how it is. I was the same way. You do not want to seek help sometimes or your pride is stopping you from going to the professor. But put all that aside. If you're aiming to get a 4.0, you should exhaust all of your means and not be afraid to ask for any help. The same could be said for study groups. Students often learn best in a collective where you can bounce ideas off one another and really start to get the wheels turning and enhance your understanding. So don't struggle in silence. There are many resources in college that can help you. Utilizing office hours and study groups are another way for you to get that 4.0. So the fifth and last point, do the work and be accountable. This is very straightforward, but many college students fall into the trap of getting distracted. And although they may be doing well, they have a bad test day or overcommit themselves one week and study hours fall to the back burner. Whatever the case may be, if you want to get a 4.0, you have to do the work. You have to hold yourself accountable or find accountability partners in other students or family to make sure that you are doing everything necessary to make it happen. You are the only person that has the ability to control your motivation and your efforts. So if you are aiming to get a 4.0, then you have to lead the charge. If you're doing well, keep it up. If you're not doing well, then you have to hold yourself accountable and identify where your shortcomings are. But you can do it. So make it happen, do the work, and hold yourself accountable. All right, guys. So to summarize my five major hacks for getting a 4.0 in college. First and foremost, read the syllabus. Get familiar with the grading scale and the workload that's going to be required of you from each course. Second, work on your scheduling and time management as these are going to be two major factors in being academically successful. Third, be strategic and stagger your schedule. Explore summer classes if that's an option, but if it's not, be sure not to overwhelm yourself with too many credits or too many difficult courses in each semester. Fourth, utilize office hours and study groups, as these are two major ways for you to enhance your understanding, stay on track, and to improve your scores. And lastly, do the work and be accountable. You are in control of your fate. And if you stay on your A-game, hold yourself accountable, and follow these five hacks, I'm certain that you're going to do well, and you could possibly get that 4.0 you're aiming for. All right, guys, so leave me a comment below and let me know your study hacks or strategies that you use to get a 4.0. Be sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button, and tune in for more. Until next time.